Hello there! Today we'll be taking a look at the priciest Craft the World DLC and we'll try to assess whether the contents justify its cost. Bosses and Monsters DLC is the fourth DLC that came out for Craft the World in June 25th of 2019 and it has honestly been one of the favorites of mine since then. But let's take a look at the developer's description of this edition first. The entire first part kinda reveals what probably all of us were expecting when reading the DLC's name, which is the fact that there are gonna be bosses thrown in the mix. And honestly, if the developers really wanted, they could have just stopped here, charge a dollar per boss and be done with this shit. But no, that is not the case. Apart from a unique boss in basically every world, we get even more stuff to play with. You get a pirate invasion in the first two worlds, new armor set, super fun weapons, got them cannon, although I might not love it personally, it's still pretty fun to use. As you can see we get a lot, but wait, that's not all of it. There are new enemies too, to increase the difficulty just a little bit. To be absolutely honest, I probably could not tell you which enemies were added in DLC even if I wanted. But what I can tell you for sure is that there are some really remarkable ones that will just keep on reminding you of their existence. This fucking worm. If you have seen some of my playthrough episodes, you might know that I have some pretty strong opinions about this guy, to the point where it's probably even going to influence my verdict, right? Well, yeah, this enemy alone adds so much to the game for me that I might recommend it just because of him. Why? Well, I'm still kind of trying to figure, but I think it's because it turns the kind of uneventful mid-game to a constant struggle with this dumbass trying to devour your structures and dwarfs alike. And while having him crawl all around, eating your shit is great fun and all, the fun does not stop there. After besting him, you get the resources for a great armor set that is both resource efficient and powerful. Is he annoying? Yeah. Is he the sole reason why some players disabled the DLC? Yes. Do I have a love and hate relationship with a 2D worm? Absolutely. And keep in mind that this is just one of the enemies the DLC adds. Oh yes, this thing basically changes the entirety of the frozen world, because now all of a sudden there is an interesting alternative way to approach combat with a Lycan army. This is all that you would expect from such a DLC. But we are still not done here. There are some extra additions that even if they were standalone would be pretty impactful to the game. These digging machines are a great step towards a more automated colony while also being satisfying to use and arguably even well balanced, giving you an alternative way to approach mining. And here we are, the library. This might just be one of the greatest game changers for a lot of people. Not only you can write books, about a certain technology to bypass crafting 40 useless statues, which should have honestly been a quality of life improvement implemented in the base game, but you also get a great extra technology that extends your ability to further scale your colony's power into the late game, increasing production speed, skill caps, mana regen or HP. Yeah, did I mention you can get flying mounts yet? Your entire colony flying anywhere they want, because you can totally do that, and yes, it is awesome. Do the dwarves sometimes get stuck on the ceiling? Yeah. But let me ask you, do they sometimes get stuck even without these? Exactly. Now, you probably noticed that I was almost only praising this DLC, and yet mixed reviews. So what is the reason for this? Most of the negative reviews are linked to bugs, which is of course alarming, but I myself had no issues regarding this DLC. Except for some minor things like the vibrance getting stuck sometimes, um, some other reviews point out that it's too hard and I can't deny that especially early on the enemies might get overwhelming, but I don't mind as you don't really have to face them early on. To sum it up a little, this DLC is just the perfect way for you to enhance your Craft the World experience and I almost feel like you're missing on uh, the greatest things the game has to offer without it. Should DLCs be this way? Should you have to buy? DLCs for your experience to feel complete? Absolutely not. But that's not the question of this video. The question is whether the price is justified. And while I already kind of outlined my view on this DLC policy 
And as much as I may disagree with such a business model, my final thoughts are that if you are someone who's looking for a complete credit world experience, you should buy this, despite its price tag. If I were to compare this to other DLCs released, I still think that it's cost effective as it adds so much to the game. And I would go as far as to say that this is the highest priority DLC alongside Sisters in Arms for anyone to get. Once again, if you don't feel like spending the full price, wait for a sale and go for it then. Now, after recording all this, I'd like to interject a little. Since the video sounds like half a review and half a sales pitch, and although it's true, I am in fact trying to sell it to you, uh, I'd like to give you a little more perspective as to why is my opinion of it so high. Imagine that you play through the entire base game, the four OG maps, and let's say that you finished it in like 80 hours, which by itself is a lot of playtime considering the price of the game compared to like AAA titles. And now, if you bought this DLC after, uh, you're basically obliged to do a second playthrough potentially doubling your playtime while also adding some neat quality of life improvements and more stuff to do in the late game, extending the playtime even further for just 6.59 euros. Anyways, um, I'm gonna hand it back over to past me to finish the video. We finally found ourselves at the end of this video and I hope that this review has been of some use to you and that you can get a pretty decent idea of how is this edition like. I also covered some of the other DLCs and plan to eventually cover them all, so if you're interested in that, uh, check the rest of my channel out. And if you enjoyed, then please consider leaving a like, comment and possibly even a subscribe if you do want to get notified about my future uploads. Have a wonderful rest of the day, stay safe and goodbye.